Hey there, audience. This is Daniel Messer, your cyberpunk librarian. I wanted to give you all a little update on why I've been so silent recently from both the podcast and the online points of view. To make matters even worse, the website was down for a couple of days and I didn't even know about it. I got an email from a listener who was actually concerned that I was retiring the podcast and had taken the site down. Well, no, that's not what happened. But that email was a clear signal that I should give you all some kind of update as to why I've been lurking and not broadcasting. Because seriously, I'm not retiring the podcast, and I'm certainly not giving up on the shows. So, here's what's going on. I often talk about being busy at work and with various projects, but in the last few weeks, things have been insane. But in a good way. To start with, I got a promotion. After working as a web content manager for around four years, I accepted a job as the integrated library system administrator for the library I work for. If you haven't a clue what the hell an integrated library system administrator is, well, from here on out, I'll just call it an ILS admin because that's easier to say. For the librarians in the audience, you could call it a systems librarian position. I'm in charge of the ILS, which is the software responsible for the workings of the library. There are several different ILS solutions, but we use one called Polaris, and I've worked with Polaris for something like 17 or 18 years now. The ILS allows a library to catalog items, check them in and out, create and manage patrons, and all of that stuff. It's sort of the core of your library experience. I've often joked that I'm a fan of Polaris ILS in the same way that some people are fans of Apple products. Like Apple products, Polaris is expensive, probably overpriced, but also happens to be the best and easiest ILS in the world, uh, according to a guy who would totally buy and wear a Polaris ILS t-shirt. And now I get to work with it on a daily basis. That's, That's pretty cool. Along with that promotion came a big starting task, and that task is, quite simply, plan and manage the upgrade of the ILS. The library I work for hasn't upgraded Polaris for over two years, and there have been several releases since the one that we are running. Upgrading an ILS isn't like upgrading an operating system. It's a lot of work because you have to figure out things like how new features should be folded into the workflow, training, and what can be done and what can't work for your library system. Not only have I worked with Polaris since it was a new product, but I've also been a Polaris instructor for years, and I've been working on the training side of things too. That means I've been making videos, shooting screencasts, and writing documents to help the staff come up to speed with the new features in the upgrade. Beyond the upgrade, I attended the Innovative Users Group annual conference in National Harbor, Maryland during the first week of April. Polaris is owned by a company called Innovative Interfaces Incorporated, and sometimes sometimes we call it Triple I. So while the users group is centered around Innovative the company, the entire point of the conference is to find out what kind of innovative work the users have done. So I was literally on the other side of the country in early April. And, oh yes, I spoke at that conference during a Blitz session. So not only was I an, was I an attendee, I was a speaker, so there was some work to do for that, too. So, okay, that's what's going on at work, but I've not even talked about what's going on at home, which is that I'm moving to a different home. We bought a house closer to the job, and we'll be moving in mid-April, so in the next couple weeks or so as I record this. Now, in a stunning display of hilariously bad timing, my moving day happens to fall on the day after the big Polaris upgrade at work. So during the weekdays, I'm working on a massive ILS project, and then I come home and work on stuff so I can move to a different house in a totally different city here in Arizona. The wheel just doesn't stop, and it won't stop until early May, really. There are nights I go to bed at 8 p.m., and I'm asleep by 8.05. But I'm not done yet. Oh no, sports racers, I've got a couple extra things going on besides all of this. 
I already mentioned one of those things right at the beginning. The cyberpunk librarian website totally fell off the freaking internet a couple of days ago. The worst part of this is that I had no idea it happened until that listener emailed me and asked me about it. I hadn't checked the site for days because I'd been so busy, and I went about my day secure in the knowledge that the monitoring service that I have watching that site would alert me of any problems. Thing is, when it dropped off, it was due to a WordPress problem that would throw an HTTP code of 200 while not actually loading the site. You get a blank white screen and yet absolutely no content. So the website wasn't down in the classical sense, but it certainly wasn't working. So the site appeared to be up, according to that monitor, but not according to the user. I was able to fix the problem in about 30 minutes, but wow, it makes me feel horrible that something so important to me and my audience wasn't working right, and I didn't know simply because I didn't click a link on my quick links page to check it out. Which brings me to another thing about the website. I want to move it. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a big fan of WordPress and I'm going to continue to use it. Yeah, it had a plug-in error and crashed, but there's not a content management system in the world that's bulletproof. I've used WordPress for over a decade. I know how it works, I know how to fix it, and I know how to make it do the things I want it to do. However, I'm just not all that keen on GoDaddy, which is where the site is hosted. And that's no surprise because a lot of people aren't keen on GoDaddy. GoDaddy doesn't quite deserve all of the hate I think they get, but they probably deserve a good share of it. It's not that their service sucks, because it really kind of doesn't. I mean, they sort of do what they do. It's just that their services really aren't geared toward what I want to do. It's kind of like buying a Peterbilt semi-truck with a sleeper cab for use as the family car. Sure, it'll work, but it's really not the right way to go about things, is it? So, after the stuff settles down for a bit, I'm going to be moving the site to a different hosting provider and setting up SSL for secure HTTPS connections. Sure, you can do SSL on GoDaddy, but the cost of doing that made me look around for other hosts and solutions, and once you start shopping around, you tend to find someone with better deals and better services. I'm still not 100% where the site will go, but I've got a couple of ideas. More on that later as things happen, but it's yet another thing that I've had to fiddle about with rather than making a show. But I have hope, listeners and librarians. I've, uh, I've done some writing here and there, and I want, to get, I want to see about getting a show out in early May sometime. Cyberpunk Librarian is not gone, believe me. It will be back. Just as soon as things settle the hell down around here, you know? So, thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking with the show. We'll be back really soon, I promise. Take care, and remember, you don't have to live high-tech to be low-budget but it certainly helps if you're a cyberpunk. I'll see you next time.